Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. My name is Stephanie Allen, and I am the Assistant Director within the Division of Professional Studies. I want to welcome you to the UMBC Virtual Open House at Shady Grove. Welcome again, and without further ado, I introduce you to the Assistant Graduate Program Director, Dr. Marat Gunarsh. Thanks a lot, Stephanie, and hi, everyone. So uh, my name is Murat Gunar, and I am the Assistant Graduate Program Director of Data Science Program at in UMBC. So today I will be uh, giving more informations, uh, some informations about our program. So first of all, let me uh, explain a little bit the logistics of our program. So um, we, um, our program, Data Science Program, has two different campuses. Uh, one of them is, we call it main campus because this is our original uh, campus, is in the uh, main campus in um, Cadenceville, uh, Maryland. This is very close to Baltimore. And UMDC is mainly located in this campus. Then in 2019, we uh, also um, uh, opened a new campus. We located ourselves in, an, in a new campus, um, which is we call a Shady Grove campus. Uh, and um, basically, I am the, I'm directing the academic uh, program there. And today, by joining today's session, you will be also, uh, like I will be giving more information about the, our, our program in Shady Grove, okay? So, but the idea is really, we have two locations, but we have one program, right? Because especially after pandemic, being most of the courses online, our students can choose uh, courses from both campuses, offered by both campuses. But the idea of having two different campuses is to be able to close to our our students in uh, especially um, DMV area. DMV standing for like um, um, DC, uh, Maryland, and Virginia area, right? So in this region, we have a lot of students, potential students, actually like current students. So there are lots of industry um, partners there. So we wanted to be close to there. And this is a, um, we want to be, give this opportunity to our students instead of making them driving um, one hour or more back and forth to Baltimore, okay? But I, I, I want you to understand that really this is one program and our students can take benefits of both campuses most of the time, okay? So let's uh, introduce um, like our small team obviously we have a way bigger team than uh what you see right now but this is our core team and you know uh, day to day if you have any issues these will be like um uh first responders to your uh, questions so as you can see this is my uh myself and karna jenkins is our graduate program manager if you have any admission related questions and you know like um logistical questions then you can reach out to karna jenkins and our uh, program director is dr shimshek and you already met with uh our uh, um, um, assistant director with um uh, stephanie Al. okay here are the email addresses and contact address, um, uh, contact, um, contacts. So please take note of these um, email addresses. And if you have any questions, follow up, please reach out to us, okay? So very briefly, I would like to uh, give, talk about our programs. So we are offering two different programs in, our prog in, 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 uh, in data science. And one of them is a kind of shorter and uh, it is four courses, 12 credits. And by finishing, by completing these courses, you will be uh, eligible for a graduate certificate. And the other one is Masters of Professional Studies. And this is 10 courses, uh, 30 credits, uh, Masters of Professional uh, program, okay? I will explain both in more details in the uh, in, in upcoming slides. So we have six uh, data uh, courses, okay? So we call them core data courses. And the idea is these are basically required courses for any data scientist, independent of the field of study that they will be taking on later on, okay? So these are Data 601, Introduction to Data Science, Data 602, Introduction to Data Analysis and Machine Learning, 
Data 603, platforms for big data processing. Data 604, data management. Data 605, ethical and legal issues in data science. And data 606, capstone in data science. So here is the also like a structure of these courses. 601 is really on the foundation of each of these courses. And then on top of this uh, solid foundation, you are trying to build other um, supporting beams, if you wish, okay? And the uh, conceptual framework is something like that, right? So on the, the, the foundation, we are building uh, core skills with 601, and then we are building machine learning skills, databases and management skills, big data and cloud skills, and then finally legal and uh, um, ethical and legal challenges, right? So this is the uh, this is the six core data data courses, and as you can see here, you only see five of them, and then capstone is basically bringing them up, uh, like up, like you you will apply all this information in the capstone course. So let me go through them very briefly, so that you would understand uh, better what you will be learning in, in each of these courses, right? In 601, you will be learning funda foundational, uh, like a, a basics of data science, right? So you will be learning about the da data science project lifecycle. You will be learning about the ETL process. You will be learning about like a visualization techniques, like basics of visualization techniques. You, you will be learning like a core um, data uh, wrangling library, which is pandas in, in Python, right? So all these really basic foundational skills you will be learning. And also like we will be talking about best practices in data science, right? So you, you will be learning all these things. So in 602, which is introduction to data analysis and machine learning, you will be learning foundational uh, like um, in, information in machine learning, right? So it's not like you will be learning about unsupervised learning problems, supervised learning problem. Yeah, for each of these things, you will be learning um, foundational, again, uh, algorithms and models also, right? Like for example, logistic regression, linear regression, decision trees, random forest, support vector machines, KNN models, right? And then you will be learning about like an unsupervised learning problem, right? So again, clustering and, you know, like um, a dimension reduction, this kind of stuff. So this is a 602 basically. And obviously, in addition to you will be learning technical details of each model. You will be learning how to work with these models, which packages, which libraries you will be using, and also how to report your findings. What are the metrics that you should be using according to the problems and et cetera. So in 603, you will be learning how to manage and how to use big data, how to, um, how to say, tame big data, right? So big data is a very, very important notion in data science. It's getting more and more popular. So in any good pla uh, like a program, uh, you should be learning how to use big data and big data tools. And in 603, we will be focusing on that. We will be using um, Spark and PySpark to be able to uh, transform data, big data, and you will be learning all the other uh, necessary tools to be able to uh, use big data, okay? And 603 is designed for that purpose. In 604, we are addressing an, another foundational skill in data science, which is Database, database management skills, right? So especially, again, SQL and relational databases are still uh, highly in use. And if the organizations are not using, they are probably storing their data already in these uh, systems and platforms. So you need to know, even if you like to migrate these things to new technology, you need to know what's going on, right? Uh, so we will be focusing on, in that sense, uh, in 604, relational databases, relational database management, and especially um, SQL language, right? In 60, um, so, so these are the four uh, courses, and 
once you finish these four courses, then basically this will be a graduate certificate, right? And even if you are applying for master's degree, you will be still eligible for graduate certificate because you will be finishing these four courses anyway. So, but if you are just a certificate, a graduate certificate student, by finishing these like foundational core courses, you will be eligible for a graduate certificate and then you will be completing the program. But if you are a master's, pro, like a master's of uh, professional studies student, then you will continue to your journey in data science. And then you will be learning ethical and legal issues in data science. As you might already know, if you are interested in data science, this is again, extremely, extremely important topic. It's getting more and more important. And in this course, we are not just talking about like, oh, how, to, you know, not to be, um, you know, like um, how to report, how to be like, um, how to use the correct language and stuff. We will be also showing you uh, like techniques and how you would understand whether a model is not uh, appropriate to use, right? So we will be using practical hands-on approaches to understand and test your model is ethical or not, or like a legally appropriate or not to use, okay? And then finally, uh, when we all finish these things, you will be using all of these skills that you learn in a one big portfolio project, which we call capstone project, right? And again, with the capstone pro project, you will bring all of these skills and connect them and implement them. And this will be your like, um, Again, as, as, as we all, I, I already said, like it will be your portfolio project. You will be like basically at the end of the, the, the program, you will be showing this project to your potential employer and you will be saying that this is what I can do. This is what I learned in this program. And you will be using all of these skills, like reporting skills, machine learning skills, statistic skills, uh, visualization skills, right? Like a, database management skills and big uh, big data platform skills. All of these uh, skills will be in practice in this capstone project. Obviously, in addition to these, we have one more co core courses, but this is not a data core courses. This is um, project management courses because every data science, data scientist will be working on a project. And, and when you, um, um, like, um, upgrade your title later on in your career, you will be managing a project. Even in early on in your career, you might be uh, like a team leader. So you should know how to manage a, a, a project and what are the important things to when you are leading a project, right? So you will be learning these things in our seventh core course. So these are the seven core courses that we are offering. Right, so we go over all of them one by one. This seven courses constitutes the core courses in our program. Six data and one project management courses. Then you have three more courses that you will be taking at UMBC, right? And these are elective courses. Why you need to take elective courses? Because as you might already know, data science has broad application, right? Many applications in many fields. For example, bioinformatics, some, uh, for example, healthcare, finance, cyber special things. These are all uses data and uh, data science. And when you are um, like finishing the program, you will be employed by a company, probably working on one of these fields. Therefore, Company is looking uh, for candidates with domain knowledge, right? You should, okay, you should know data science, but you should also know, let's say, cybersecurity a little bit. Okay, you should know data science, but you should know also finance a little bit, right? Like finance, financial knowledge. So this is why, excuse me, we allow our students to choose three courses so that they can build this bridge between the data science courses that they are taking and the, the field that they would like to work uh, later on when they finish the, the program, okay? So this is usually nine credits, you know, like a three courses. Uh, 
and you can take them uh, anytime in the program, but ideally we recommend you to take these courses later on or not in your first semester, right? So, so that you could have, you know, you could implement also like a, you can build this bridge, with, bridge within the data science skills and the um, uh, domain knowledge, all right? Domain knowledge skills. And you can take any course that you can take within the UMBC umbrella, you can take means here, there's an asterisk, which means the other program, the instructors should approve your uh, enrollment. Uh, they should, you should satisfy the prerequisites of these courses that should be available seats and etc. But as long as you can take that course, I mean, basically we approve these courses as your data science electives. Okay. And obviously you are communicating this thing with your advisor. In this case, I will be your uh, academic advisor. So we will be in communication, which courses you should be taking for your electives. Okay. And uh, so these courses usually offered by some other programs in UMBC or uh, basically some partner institution. Okay. So as data science program, we are offering data science courses. Some other programs are offering like cybersecurity courses, special analytics courses, right? Uh, healthcare courses or like bioinformatics courses. So we are partnering with within UMBC or outside of UMBC partners so that you can take their courses and they're obviously taking our courses too, if they want to improve their data science skills. But as I already said, you can take any courses, but we encourage our students to focus on a field and choose three of these courses from one particular uh, area. And we call these areas like a specializations as pathways. And we created some courses, some like a fixed many, if you wish, uh, for you so that you can, you don't have to plan uh, or you can easily choose. These are cybersecurity pathway, management science and management science and project management pathway, special analytics pathway, and bioinformatics pathway. The other pathways that we have, but they are not necessarily offered uh, courses in Shady Grove. But again, after the pandemic, this become a little bit like a, the 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 line between different campuses become blurred because. Like most of the departments are offering online courses as Shady Grove uh, students, you can take these courses also. So the other ones are health IT, public policy, advanced computing and advanced analysis. So if you find any courses within these pathways, you can also still, and if they are online, or if you are willing to drive to Baltimore campus, you can still enroll to these uh, courses or pathways. Okay, so for example, for cybersecurity pathway, we created these courses for you, right? So, or like a, we, we are suggesting you to take these three courses as your electives so that you will have a good uh, comprehensive uh, knowledge about cybersecurity. Instead of you take one courses from cybersecurity, one courses from bioinformatics and one courses from engineer management, right? Can you do that? Yes, you can, but we recommend you to follow and stick to one of these pathways if it is possible, okay? Because then you will have a better chance to get employed in cybersecurity area or like a special analytics uh, area or like project management area if you stick to these fields. Okay, so, and also in addition to this, you will increase your expertise in cybersecurity and project management. You would be uh, receiving a graduate certificate from these programs. As we are offering graduate certificate, these programs are also offering a graduate certificate. And once you finish these three courses, you will be getting a graduate certificate from their program. So when you finish the program, in addition to having an uh, MPS degree in data science, you will, be, you will be getting, let's say, cybersecurity graduate certificate or project management uh, graduate certificate in your portfolio. So it will increase your chances and it will be uh, it, it will make you more competitive in the market, right? Um, so I want to, I want to remark um, and um, emphasize one more time, these pathway courses are not offered by us. These are offered most of the time by other partners and they are managing 
they are offering these courses. So we do not have any control over these courses. So I just want you to know. All pad, not all pad course, uh, pathway courses are offered all every semester. So here, for example, this HIT, Healthcare Analysis Pathway 723, Public Health Informatics, might not be opened, let's say, spring semester or summer semester. This might this course might be offered only in falls, right? So you need to, if you are following this pathway, you should do your planning ahead of your ahead of the, uh, the time, okay? Uh, and most of these courses will have prerequisites. So you should reach out to these programs. You should reach out to these instructors and explain why you are satisfying the prerequisites, why you will be able to succeed in this class. Because as you can see, these are not easy co courses. Like some of them are advanced, uh, like a technical courses, for example, here, bioinformatics for analysis of next year in generation sequencing. You should let the instructor know that why you could do this kind of um, like a technical material, why you could learn and succeed in, in this kind of technical material, okay? There might be some prerequisites of these courses. You should be able to satisfy these things. Okay. In addition to these partnering programs, as a data science program, we do also offer elective courses. So if you wanna, you might, you might say, do you know what? I don't wanna specialize in cybersecurity. I don't wanna specialize in bioinformatics. I would like to go deeper in data science, right? So you already have a good foundation. You know like what a data scientist should know, but you wanna go deeper, right? Which areas you can go deeper? Um, we like, and for this kind of purposes, we offer also uh, electives. And also we offer electives, let's say you finished your uh, undergraduate 15 years ago and you are a little bit rusty in statistics. You are a little bit rusty in uh, programming, right? So I, we don't want this thing to be an, a huge obstacle for you to become a data scientist. And if you feel this kind of like a refreshing, let's say in certain materials, we offer some elective courses. We call them foundational electives. And you can take these courses at the beginning of your uh, program so that you can prepare a little bit for other material, core material, right? These are called foundational electives. So remember that you had three electives. You can use one or two of your electives. In fact, sometimes if you needed three, you can use all of your electives in foundational skills so that you would be more prepared for the core courses, okay? But if you say, no, 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 I'm good. Like I, I have a good medical foundation. I have a good statistical foundation. I have good programming foundation. I'm ready for the core courses. I wanna take my core course, courses and then I would like to use my electives for more advanced data science courses. Yes, we do have more advanced data science courses also, which is again, the typical popular uh, advanced uh, material in data science is natural language processing, right? Uh, AI uh, in practice. So this course is really a cool course, one of our cool courses financial data science, right? So you might wanna uh, understand more like time series uh, related techniques and uh, designing data driven web apps, right? So this is, again, you can train a machine learning model, but you know, implementing this thing, deploying this thing in, in practice is a little bit more trickier than just training the model. So you will be learning this kind of advanced techniques in this course, okay? So you can choose your electives from among these advanced advanced material also, okay? So this was our program, like right? this, this is the, the, the content of our program, but you know, let me also go through what is going on, right? So what is really in the field, like on the, on the field, what is going on and you know, what are like, who is our faculty, who is teaching these courses? So here, as you can see, this is one of our instructors, Patty Delefant, uh, um, she is teaching um, AI in practice course, and she is working for NVIDIA, right? And if you know NVIDIA, NVIDIA is a leading uh, company in uh, uh, GPU processor uh, manufacturing, right? So they are really uh, the leader in the global, global leader in the field. And she, she is basically getting all these uh, GPUs and like a competing uh, machines so that you can implement uh, this kind, like um, you can use these processors in your courses. So this become, and she 
uh, develop this curriculum on, on uh, her own with a colleague from Oxford University. So this is a unique opportunity to really um, take this course. Our students really loving that that course. Uh, another, for example, interesting thing. So here you see Charles Giv uh, Givre, and he is he has a startup right on his own, and this is called like a data distill distil distiller. And for anyone who is in, in, in his class, he is uh, allowing students to use uh, this platform, uh, his, his company's platform, so that they will have free uh, resources to write SQL queries, utilize SQL and low code to explore diverse data sets, build exploration data sets, join data sets, and create tables. So this is, again, another, for example, it's I'm trying to show here, like, our instructors and our courses designed to make you ready to do industry, right? So our, our faculty is not like um, classical faculty in terms of like, you will be just focusing on the technical and theoretical aspects of uh, models and uh, uh, like uh, notions. You will be implementing, you will be using um, cutting edge tools, okay? So let's go further. And here I would like to, another instructor of uh, ours is, as you can see, senior staff data scientists, they are instructors are already senior level, manager, manager level data scientists. They know this area. They know what is in demand, what is popular, what you need to know to be able to be a successful data scientist. Um, so here, as you can see, like uh, really he is giving the, um, uh, data driven web applications course. This is again also a very popular course. Another are uh, like a very popular instructor is Tony Diana. And he recently got, in fact, this semester he, he recently shared with us, he got an um, award from his organization uh, for his work in, in machine learning. And he's our uh, machine learning instructor. Uh, and also he is doing the capstone project. He is instructing the capstone project. So here, as you can see, he is already manager, right? So he is managing data science project in his company. So this is again, like he knows what's going on in the field. This is so important, I think, if you wanna uh, be prepared for the uh, workforce. Okay, some other um, instructor of ours, uh, Dong Hwa Kim, for example, he is working for Databricks. He is a, a partner solutions architect at Databricks. And if you know Databricks, Databricks is one of the most popular platform for uh, using big data, right? using uh, a Spark, for example, right? So this is, again, as you can see, like our instructors are really leaders of the, of the field, okay? Uh, Abdullah Karasan, uh, he's teaching the financial, uh, financial data science course. He has a book on this topic from O'Reilly uh, Publishing. So he wrote financial data science book uh, for, like, uh, with O'Reilly. So this is, again, he's a published author on this subject. So, and he has a PhD on this, on this particular topic too. So this is uh, basically, we are really proud of our faculty and we see that one of our biggest strength is our like crafted, uniquely crafted uh, faculty. And in fact, we spend a lot of time and energy to be able to find these unique um, talent. And let's hear a little bit. Uh, so this was a video, but I, I think right now, uh, just uh, the format is broken. So our graduates, where our graduates are working? Our graduates are working um, at IBM, KPMG Consulting, right? Deloitte Consulting. So we have, our graduates are working really like a top level companies, top level consulting companies. And this is also another advantage of ours because uh, as a location, the location that we are, uh, like uh, our campus is located is Virginia, uh, Maryland area and DC, right? So these are all, all of the big companies are around. So there is a huge demand, especially consulting job, right? Um, because lots of consulting companies are working with the federal, working for federal government. So this is in that sense, like a, we are located in a unique way and really uh, in a strategic way. 
So our graduates are most of the time have no difficulty finding good jobs. So this is, I, I want, like I recently added this thing to my um, slides because they shared this thing yesterday. Um, so I, I, I wanted to add this thing here because this is, we didn't request this student of ours to share this information. They just shared this thing on their personal LinkedIn page, right? And I, I just, I think this is, this is saying a lot about our program. So I wanna read very quickly. So this is Jorge Neira, and he is our well, one of our students, and also he's already a machine learning engineer, also working uh, machine learning engineer. So he was saying, I was kind of blown away listening to my classmates' capstone project presentations last night. I really wasn't sure how to how my master's program was uh, going to go since it was so new. I just knew that I was going to make the best of it no matter what. But in listening to my classmates last night, I don't think that I was the only one with that mentality. Some of them started without even knowing how to code. But I know I now see them tackling real world problems with numbers, data, and technology. I'm looking forward to the final presentation. If you are an employer looking for data scientists, look into this year's graduates. So this is, I think, you know, this tells a lot. Our students really uh, enjoying the program, and I think they are learning a lot, and they know they learn a lot. They can literally see the progress they have uh, made in this program. Uh, so um, now Stephanie will tell you more about the admission requirements. And thank you, Dr. Ganesh. Yeah. To be applicable for admissions consideration, all applicants must hold a bachelor's degree in any subject matter with a minimum GPA of 3.0 on the 4.0 scale. If your previous institution has a different scale, we do have graduate school administration to accurately convert for committee review. Please note that all prior coursework should include calculus, statistics, and basic programming, such as Python, which is the main language of our program. If an applicant has work experience that would demonstrate abilities in programming, this may be a factor of consideration towards requirements. However, if you do not have prior coursework or work experience, Dr. Grenache shared previously, we do recommend that you take online courses in statistics, linear algebra, and or programming. While the GRE is not a requirement, international applicants must demonstrate proficiency in the English language by submitting one of the three tests as shared via screen. Currently, we are also accepting the Duolingo test score report. Please note all reports must be less than two years old. In regards to the actual application process, you will apply online, which all applications are managed by our trusted partner, CollegeNet. You can find the application link on screen here, or you may find it via the data science website under the how to apply section. As part of the application packet, you'll need to request all official transcripts sent to the UMBC Graduate School. This can be done via U.S. mail or via their email, which is gradschool at umbc.edu. For our international applicants, again, you must provide one of the English proficiency test reports, as well as we require you to submit two letters of recommendation, which must be on letterhead and signed by the recommender. In terms of the academic resume, we do receive quite a bit of questions of what's best to include with the resume. What we're looking for is information such as your GPA, awards received, research experience, and any programming and coursework background that would be relevant towards your program skills learned. And then for your statement of purpose, this is your goal statement, and it's where we get to know you, your background and your academic intent in data science, as well as your future career plans. It's also where you can briefly share 
any concerns of perhaps a lower GPA or test report. And the next slide, in terms of transfer credit. Next slide, please. We accept up to six hours of graduate level coursework. In order to have this evaluated, you must send the following to Karina Jenkins' attention. And that's a completed UMBC transfer credit request form, which is found on the UMBC website. Please, please do not simply send a general email with various documents attached. It truly must begin with the UMBC transfer credit request form. And then we also do need a course description, a syllabus, and the number of credit hours. So I've now shared with you the main areas of the application and admission process. So I'll now turn it back over to Dr. Gunash. Thank you, Stephanie. And here I want to emphasize one more time. Uh, the international uh, admission deadline is May 1st and general admission deadline is August 1st. So please pay attention to these deadlines. If you have any questions, please reach out to me, okay? Or reach out to Karnet Jenkins from the contact information that we previously shared. And that's it. Please use uh, this uh, code, special code to waive the application fee, okay? And as I said, if you have any questions, now I can take them. If you have any questions also, you can always reach out to me from this email address. If you have any questions about admission process, please reach out to Kearney Jenkins from this email address, okay? Uh, for academic related, like you might ask, so I finished this, this, this courses and, you know, do you think I'm a good fit? Or you might, you might ask, let's say, uh, what is exactly you are focusing on data science, data, uh, machine learning courses, etc. I am a good person uh, for this kind of questions. But if you have, oh, my um, transcript has this, 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 do you still accept this transcript? Then this kind of questions should go to Karna Jenkins, okay? Thank you so much for joining us, Ali, today. All right, Dr. Ganesh, I think that we can officially end the program. And again, thanking all of our attendees and if there are no other questions, we'll say good night and continue to be safe.